Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with the much anticipated number part seven of the John Panisi interview series. John Panisi is a former member of the Italian mob, uh, Lucchese crime family here in New York City. Uh, John, welcome back to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today, John? Doing good, Tom. How are you? Okay, so we are right on the heels of Christmas. And let's start off with talking about um, mafia protocol on Christmas. So bring us back to 2015, 2016. What goes on this type of year for John Panisi, a made guy with the case of family? Um, yeah, well, this, this time of year is we, we have a Christmas party and um, it's not, it's, it's not one big party for the Bagada. It's, it's broken into crews. So each crew will have a Christmas party. Um, all the families do it. Um, and, and you could go, you know, you could go to other parties and they could come to yours. Um, you know, there's no, um, it's not just for your family. So we've had parties where we've had other families, guys from other families come to our Christmas party. And, um, and it's at that party that your crew will kick in and out, kick up an envelope to your capo regime, your captain, or whatever, whatever way you want to call them. Um, and it, it started out um, at 2,500 and a man. Okay. So, um, and, and the, and the, the captain, I, I believe it's 10,000 per captain that would kick up to the administration. So, you know, what, if you kept it at 2,500 a man and, you know, you had 10, 10 guys possibly, yeah. uh, you know, now you had, now you had 2,500, I mean, 25,000 rather, right. and you would kick up 10. So he would get 15 for himself or he, or if he, he doesn't mean he had to give 10, yeah. He could give 15 yeah. or more, you know, obviously the more money you give, the better you look. <laughs> and, um, and when it was at 25, that didn't mean that a guy couldn't give more in that sense too, and, and, and look better to his, to his guy. Um, what, what had happened years back was that uh, Big John changed it to 6,000 per man um i think i've said it several times i've never given it to him um i believe the most i ever gave him might have been like 3500 and he was always bitching and moaning and about not only about me about other guys but um he uh I'm, the very last one joe perna from jersey you know was with our crew was going in to go do his bid, um, you know, on the gambling case. And um, I believe he, yeah, he gave 4,000 and Big John complained to everybody and he complained to Cyburns, Johnny Cyburns, and we passed the message to Joe Perna and he sent them another 2,000. Um, I've always said, and it is my belief still to this day, that John should have took the original 4,000 and sent it back yeah. and said, Hey, give this to your wife and kids. You know, you have to, you're going away. Right. And that, that's just to show you the character that, you know, he was, and he didn't belong in that position. He was, he was very, very greedy. And, but back to myself, I never did give him the, the, the amount that he wanted um and the reason being is um there were certain guys in the crew that like he knew growing up and these were you know it's mostly brooklyn guys and like scotty javasi he was a, a a friend with us and he he would tell johnny he didn't have it and he wouldn't give nothing hmm. so like we what we discussed it we said what are we going to give extra money to cover these guys and they're making with, with four loaves of bread under their arms. Are you kidding me? You know, 
Uh, that's funny. So I want to make sure I filter this correctly. So he's he, let's say he gets his six k mm-hmm. guy. He has sixty thousand dollars, and then he gives the yeah you know, the boss probably thirty. He looks like a rock star. Yes, and keeps thirty. You, you know, correct for himself. So um, um, and just like again, because I'm super curious. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of guys have been you know in prison or they're on parole or that kind of stuff. Also, like you guys are always worried about surveillance. You know, I know you were super low key. When you had your parties, were they like in the front? Probably well, in old school, or well, that kind of, you know, clandestine. Yeah. So, no, the answer is no. But we had, we went to several places. We didn't go to one um, particular place every year. And we switched it a couple of times, mostly restaurants, right? And then the last two being actually a West Side restaurant. Oh, wow. Yes. And in Staten Island. And um, I remember parking my car um, like blocks away and walking. And on one of, on one of those uh, Christmas, Christmas uh, parties, the agents mm-hmm. were parked right across the street in a blacked out car, excuse me. And, and, and I, I remember saying like, we shouldn't even be doing this because they, (laughs) they're blatantly watching us. Like, you know, sometimes you don't see them, but believe it, they're there. They're they're somewhere. But on this particular Christmas, they were parked and I would take my jacket, you know, Maybe I was fooling myself, but I would take like my jacket, even at wake sometimes. And I would, if I knew they were parked somewhere and I would make believe I was putting it on, but put it up, I would shield my face and yeah. walk in and, you know, you know, who are you fooling? They, 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 they know who's there and listen, you know, I didn't know at the time, but you know, now obviously uh, I, I know a lot more. <laughs> they got one or two guys that are in there. You know, believe believe that. You know, so they know who's going to. They how do they know when the parties when the party is? Because we didn't discuss that over the phone. We discussed that in person. Yeah. So that meant that somebody is telling law enforcement, "Hey, it's Thursday night at seven thirty at this place." You know, how do they know? I mean, unless they unless they surveil somebody to the place, but you know, they know. Yeah. So no, it was not. Um, the only thing I can say is that the last two with the West Side restaurant in Staten Island, we did not go inside the restaurant. We went in like a little side party room, which was which was the right way to do it and not be on display. Although other than that, we were on display. We did have tables in the back of the restaurant, but you know, there was other diners there. And it's like I, I think I said it before. Um it, it just is uncomfortable when you're eating or whatever is going on and people are staring like in your mouth, you know, like they're all staring because yeah. they know, you know, <laughs> how do you, how do you hide that who, who you are Correct. with, you know, 25, 30, 40 guys yeah. all dressed up. Cause we were dressed going to these parties. Um, there's, there's, some phony stories about these parties. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's why we're here. This is dedicated to La Cosa Nostra Christmas. So, like, yeah, yeah, sure. salud, Merry uh, Christmas. Time. So, time. so, so, um, one particular party we were in, uh, Zio Toto, right? So, now that, as I said before, was located in the strip mall where the cigar shop kind of was like a gathering place yes. or club if, if you will and it was in the same strip mall so we didn't have far to go we would go there and we would walk over and at that time there was some it was <laughs> it's funny it it was a punishment to be sent to the staten island crew which was our crew <laughs> and 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 but you know no one wanted to come to come there but but yeah. To to explain that a little bit more, you know, and who I'm talking about was the Pernis. So it was Ralphie, the father, right, and his son Johnny, who who's now just just took the uh, 
just pled guilty on the on the case with the housewives, right? So they sent them to Staten Island. So now they were uh, brought into our crew as a punishment. But but people people like even guys in the crew thought, oh, you know, they don't want to come to Staten Island or they don't want to be around us Brooklyn guys because th- it was it was a Staten Island crew, but it was a Brooklyn part of it was the Brooklyn faction, right? Yeah. But but that's not true because the way I looked at it is that because Big John was an inept capo regime, a captain, he was not meant for the position. That was the punishment in itself. Is that, that believe me, and it's not that I, I always have something bad to say about John. Yeah. It's John's character. So they were very unhappy and very, very uncomfortable. Don't forget to give you a little history, um, Ralphie was one of the Jersey members who was targeted by Vic and 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 uh, Gas Pipe. Oh, they wow. were going to kill him on Christmas, right? They were going to kill the whole. They were going to wipe the whole Jersey crew out. Yeah. So now here is Ralphie getting put back to to us. Who 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 do we represent? We are the Brooklyn faction, who at one time was going to kill kill all Jersey guys. So you know he he yeah. was uncomfortable, but but. I loved Ralphie and, and um, I really did. I, I, I loved Ralphie and he was, he was a real good guy. So back to the story, yeah. they send them probably only like a month or so before the party. So maybe we get them maybe in sometime in, in November and then we have the party and he comes to the party with his son, uh, Johnny. And, I went and was going to sit next to them because I started seeing Ralphie and talking to him and I, I liked him. Yeah. And um, and little Joey, the Benedetto, was on that side of the table and Big John was up against the wall, right? And he motioned to me, Big John, to come talk to him. So I went over to him. He says, listen, I want you to sit next to me. And... Like I wanted to tell him, you know, I want to go sit over there. I really want to go sit with them because we were having a nice conversation, kidding yeah. around, laughing. And he's yeah. Ralphie's an old timer. Yeah. And you know, I like I I lean more towards the old timers. I don't yeah. know why. You know, they're more knowledgeable. Yeah. So um anyway, um I go and sit next to John and you know, and I tell him, Oh, I, you know, we'll catch up later. I'm just we're gonna while we eat, right? And we're going through the dinner and I really didn't take notice of this until uh, John, Big John pointed it out. I guess Johnny was on some kind of narcotics. He was either taking some pills or whatnot, but what happened was he was starting to nod out and my mouth was hanging open when I really looked at him and noticed it. Because, I mean, you got to understand what, what this means. Here is a friend at a table full of friends. I mean, there's, there's associates also that at these parties. Oh, they're, they're not, yes, yes. So it's not just friends. There's associates there too. Yeah. And it's kind of like everybody's all over the place. But, yeah. um, you know, it's a bad look. Like, you know, you got a guy that's a friend. Even if you, let me explain this, Tom. Let's say you got out of hand and got very drunk. Yeah. It looks very bad. Sure. You know, you sure. need to conduct yourself the right way, right? And we're not talking about somebody that was drunk. We're talking about somebody that's nodding. Yeah. And like the everything stopped. Yeah. Well, just to show you what kind of character john was you know what he told me he says move over a little bit i gotta get this he was videotaping and taking pictures of johnny now i'm gonna tell you from experience what john's supposed to do in that position john's supposed to get up say excuse me go over tap johnny on his shoulder says come with me take him either to the side or outside and tell him go home you're embarrassing yourself and you're embarrassing us. And we'll talk about this tomorrow and come back here tomorrow. That's what he's supposed to do. John is taking pictures of the guy. So I turned around and said to him at that point, I said, you know, 
maybe he's maybe he's on some kind of medication because yeah. I'm trying to cover for the guy, but I know he's on something. Yeah. And the reason why it becomes funny, and it's not really funny, but they he ordered as a dessert Nutella pie, right? <laughs> and and Tom he nods into this Nutella pie and oh, uh. gets up. He's got <laughs> Nutella all over his face, like blackface. And and I'm looking, saying, I don't even want to laugh because I said, <laughs> I want to like let him know, like, Bo, clean, clean your face. <laughs> but there's no way I could relay this message across this table. Yeah, and yeah. John's clicking away <laughs> with the camera, with his phone. Finally... This poor Ralphie looks up. This poor guy, he looked like he wanted to crawl under the table. He grabbed his son. They got him to the side. He cleaned his face off. I seen John walk over. Ralphie handed him two envelopes, and they were gone. Oh, my God. It was was mortifying. Do you think, um, I mean, you got to lean towards this in the story. Do you think there was some recreational use, or do you think maybe he got his like teeth pulled and he was on maybe something prescribed? Um, I discussed. I discussed it with Joey, the brother. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now after they send, after penance is over, and they send Ralphie and Johnny back to Jersey, yeah. we now get Joey Perna. Oh, okay. Once we get Joey, that's when Joey and I become friends and close, and. And I, and I bring, I bring this up to him and he admits to me that the, the brother Johnny has, has a little bit of a problem Got it. and that he also did this in Jordan Apple's house. And it's just a long story, but they, yeah. you know, Maddie grabbed them outside and said, listen to me. I was in the can, you know, I pushed, I pushed this shit. Yeah. I, I never, you can't tell me that this, this guy's not on, uh, not on junk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was bad for Johnny. Well, if, if you're on, if you're found to be on something as a, as a, as a friend, could you get shelved? Could you get murdered? Like, did they get help? Like what? You, well, I mean, years ago, they would, you would, you would, you would, you would go. Yeah. Um, um, they had a, another guy, um, if I can remember his name, but anyway, guys, yeah, they'll, there's, there's a guy that got shelved over, you know, either se- he was selling and using and um, he, he got himself shelved over that. Interesting. Now, um, I'm, I, you know, John and I talk a lot offline with friends and we just chit chat. And a lot of the stories that he tells me on the podcast, as well as personal, it really reminds me of a corporation, how it's run, protocols, um, that kind of stuff. What's done at the meeting, you know, at the dinner? Like, does maybe John, you know, is, is like, do we not talk about business? Or does John get up and say, hey, we had a pretty good year? Or, or if it was a shitty year, hey, we had a shitty year, you know? Like, is he, like, it sounds corny, but like, does he try to motivate the staff? Does he, the team, do you not talk business at all? Because, you know, obviously there's, there's some, some years on you, you know, it's a company, right? It's a business. And Correct. how does that go every year with your leader? And what, what does he do and what is he supposed to do? We were strictly there to celebrate, you know, the Christmas season. It, we, we, we did, you can't, I mean, if business comes up, it comes up, but we, we did not discuss business at that time. Um, um, at the very last one, uh, Mikey DeSantis and I, he wanted to sit with me. Um, I remember that guys had cell phones on the table and, um, he was like, where, well, where are we going to sit? And I said, well, come on, we'll go sit right over here. He said, yeah, but somebody got the phone. I took the phones. I moved them out of the way. You know, we said, who's going to say anything? And we sat down and um, it was Scotty Javasi sitting across from us. And so just the, at this particular um, Christmas party, I mean, you could call it business. It was talk about that Scotty had mentioned that there's really no one out there to 
bring in. In other words, you know, none of the young guys, he felt that. And I, I was in agreement with him that, you know, who are we going to, he, he was talking about like, where is our future? Right. Yeah. Because who are we bringing in yeah. right, to, to, to the Bagada? And, and where is our future and whatnot? And it was at that point that Mikey uh, DeSantis turned around and, and pointed to me and told Scotty Gervasi. Now, this was in earshot of a lot of guys, yeah. you know, and told him, you're looking, pointing to me, you're looking at your future. So oh, wow. that's the kind of regard he had for me back then at that point, Interesting. Um, which was surprising to me. I, I, you know, I never expected him to say that. Um, and, but aside from that particular uh talk i i've had none of the parties years past before that prior i've never heard any kind of business or any kind of talk or you know anything i've never it was just a social gathering yeah. for us to have cup to have dinner together and yeah. drink and wish each other you know happy holidays and, and whatnot now um we talked a little bit about you know obviously you would kick up whether Weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, to your to your to your upline, your captain. And, you know, let's just say for sake of argument, you know, it's Christmas time, it's near the end of the year, and you're just having a rough year. Maybe people don't pay, something doesn't pan out, no big scores, no rent the wise guy, just a rough year. Like, do you have like a quota that like Big John's like looking at you like, dude, like this was a shitty year. You got, you know, a week left, or you know, or is it not? so finite you're having a shitty year you kind of get a mulligan you know you you worry about the next like i'm just trying to get a feel for i mean yeah so they you know look in that life everybody's crying poverty right like that happens in, you know that happens in 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 um in the legitimate world as well right everybody cries poverty and um so there was a year when i heard and, and, you know, some, when we say you heard, I would hear from, from John, he'd be complaining, or he would complain to Johnny Cyburns, who would bring it back, and saying that, you know, uh, you know, nobody really did the right thing at Christmas, and that coming up, if there's any money, that they should kick it back in and make up for the Christmas. So similar to what you were just saying. Yeah. Yeah, and I've heard it that way, but there was never, you know, any, um, you know, uh, speech or talk that said from John, you know, oh, you know, you owe me X amount of, of, of money. But he would cry and complain and, you know, he knew it would get back. And, you know, I would disregard whatever I heard <laughs> because I was not, you know, whatever I gave, I gave. And there was times, like I said, the most I believe was like thirty-five or thirty-six hundred, whatever it was. But I never gave the six thousand ever. Got it. Now you mentioned that the Perners were kind of reassigned to the Staten Island Legacy Brooklyn crew, Correct. Kind of maybe a form of punishment. Was it because the Jersey faction was so small and weak, and like they rolled into them, or was the Jersey faction so strong, but the Perners were moved over specifically for punishment? For them, um, it was from what I heard, and you heard me call them the Hatfields and the McCoys. There was some some kind of uh, back and forth bickering or whatever. Whatever it was over, I don't know whether it was over money or um, I, I'm not sure what it was about. But I know that there was some trouble uh, between them. Don't forget, most of these, most of them are related some way, you know, in some way, and that's that's what had happened there. Now, at that time, um, Ralphie, the father, who at one time was the the capital regime for that that crew, was no longer. He was just the, a soldier in the crew, uh, taken down. Um, at that time, I, I believe it was. Richie DeLuca I, and 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 one of the Perna cousins, Joey, another Joey Perna, was the acting captain. Um, so I'm not really sure what took place, but something was going on because first, like I mentioned uh, earlier, that we got the father and one of the sons, and then when they were sent back to Jersey, we got the other son, Joey. Got it. Not together, you know. Did you notice that they were split up? So. 
I don't um, know. And when Joey came to us, he was happy to get away from the Jersey crew. So whatever was happening, it, it had to be, you know, in, um, in a family. And I don't mean ours. I mean theirs. You know, there was some kind of dispute going on. It was a lot of bad blood. Um, he had Joey had told me that at one time when he wasn't a friend, he was making pretty good money uh, in the in the sports betting and gambling, and they had called him somewhere. His cousins, which I believe at the time both of them were friends, and they gave him they lumped him up. <laughs> so this is yes. So it's his own cousins. He said he could barely walk home. They're like they gave him some shellacking and took money. Told him I, I think they took. I don't. I don't want to misquote it, but it was over a hundred thousand, maybe one hundred twenty thousand, one hundred twenty-five thousand, and they they yes. kind of like took his business. Yeah. So there's a lot of bad blood there. Yeah. With, you know between them. And then he later became a friend. Correct. And yeah. and you know just so you know that when the day that you become a friend. Yeah. No matter what took place prior to that, you know, I mean, this is really the way it's supposed to be, yeah. that if you get straightened out on a Friday, if something happened that Monday, you can't now turn around and retaliate because you cannot use that as a tool. You know, you it's not what that's not what that life is about. You know, that's not what you're getting, uh, you know, you're getting straightened out for other reasons not for retaliate retaliatory reasons you know interesting so okay so a lot kind of a, a continue along with the christmas theme um so you guys you know have a big party every year so you like you got to keep that tradition you kick up you know x amount um you know you mentioned one of the partners was going away to jail and you had to give money and then another two thousand um, right. i thought one of the one of the things about being about being a friend is if you went away, they send envelopes to your house every week, put some money in your commissary. You know, as far as you know, at least at the seventh, um, was that still the case? Well, I don't know about every week, but um, or whatever. Or whatever. I know, yeah, I know that they were doing the commissary thing. Okay. I don't know, and I don't want to say that it wasn't happening. I don't know about giving money to people's families, but I know that they were sending the commissary money. And like I said, um, you know, knowing that we were trying to do that right that we sent commissary and put money on the side is more the reason why john should have not even accepted the first money that he gave him which was four thousand sure. and not complain that he wanted more and he took the other two so that made six and he took it put it in his pocket you know, you're talking about a, a guy that's, I don't care what he made, what he has. You're talking about a guy that's going to do a bid, right? And is leaving behind a wife with two kids. Yeah. And, you know, I just left it, left a bad taste in my mouth, what he did. Now you, um, you know, you seem to be like an historian like myself. I love the history. I love the old school stuff, but, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's pretty interesting. You look great great um kind of picture of what's happening now as far as you know what were like past administrations like Casso, you know gas and vic what do they kind of expect versus madonna versus over to desantis what what was kind of like the leadership styles and what they like you know in terms of christmas time and end of the year stuff well i mean i as far as as far as the dollar amount i i, I really wouldn't know uh, you know, back then what they were getting, but I know that the Christmas parties was, were much bigger back then. Okay. And they, uh, you know, some of these, sometimes they were renting halls out like oh. a wedding. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, we, I've never went to, went to one like that, but, um, you know, remember I, I'm, and I, and I'm only assuming, um, Tom, the, there was a lot more money being made back then so i would assume that even if it was still a twenty five hundred dollar per man and ten thousand per skipper you had i bet you 
that the envelopes were a lot larger because the amount of money that was being made, there was a lot of money being made that back then compared to now. Now, you know, wise guys were chasing the same dollar, you know, chasing their tails. So, yeah. you know, that has a lot to do with it, even though I don't know the dollar amount, but I'm sure that the envelopes were a lot thicker because, you know, guys were making it, you know, and you don't mind giving more and it makes you look good, right? Like you said, a rock star makes you look, makes you look good like you're an earner yeah. and that was probably happening happening a lot more back then got it now as far as you know um because you know you're obviously sharing that your family your, your board is Turgata, and kind of like mixed it with, up with others was there one family that kind of did it right maybe like the gambinos actually gave their guys money or or you know one family that you know kind of really did it right did the west side even have a party like i'm just wondering the dynamic across across the, the, the different families at Christmas. Um, I mean, I, I've heard of other Bogatas uh, having parties. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember uh, specifically hearing if the West Side had. had I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure that out of all their crews somebody had some kind of a party it was probably low key because yeah. you know they try to do things differently um you know but there are parties and and i don't i don't know the particulars of what other pagadas were doing yeah. and were they doing it were they not who wasn't not having any parties maybe maybe they were maybe that was happening yeah. you know maybe yeah. there was a pagada that they said when i have no parties which would probably be a smart move <laughs> you know now uh we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up soon because this is meant to be a quick christmas one make sure everybody's wet uh beak stayed wet uh because you've given some great stories but john you gotta share the story guys he has so many stories that we, we didn't even scratch the service uh this is not a christmas one but you were meeting a friend at our julio's in, in brooklyn oh, you the west <laughs> you gotta tell me that. you gotta share that story like you told me i, I just I, it's not so, so high, but it's just, it kind right. of is so so we it, it wasn't first of all it, was, it, it wasn't um i was there but it wasn't me that had the meeting okay. i just happened to be there and i joined them obviously i was going to be with our guys yeah and um it was <laughs> it was um big john's brother spanky yeah and it was Johnny Cyburns, right? So you always hear me say Johnny Cyburns. We were together a lot. We were in the same crew. And um, and and now Big John's brother, Spanky, was not in our crew at that time. He was in a, um, he was in, a, I don't know if they consider him Long Island, but I guess he was in a Long Island crew. And um, and myself. So we go to, we go to Brooklyn and, Next to Gargiulio's is a West Side uh, club. It's like a social club. And we're meeting a, a uh, I think it's a Capo regime with them named Barry. And um, so we go into the club first. And I think there was a birthday party going on. So they had this birthday cake and we stood for cake and we had a little uh, espresso. And, you know, introduced me to a couple of guys. Yeah. They happened to know more of them than I did. Yeah. And they were setting up this meeting because the the friend that they actually had to speak to was with this particular skipper with the West Side. So we had to speak to the skipper. So anyway, to speed to speed the story up, we're gonna go walk next door into God Julio's, the restaurant, right? And we do. We they say, all right, let's, let's, matter of fact, they went outside, they were talking and I was eating my second serving of cake. It was delicious. <laughs> and they, they came in and said, right, come on, we, we, we're going to go next door. Yeah. And we, we go next door and now we start going into the rooms, right? Yeah. And we walk through the place and we go in one room and then somebody's there and they say, oh, just go through that door. And we go through the back door and now we're going into another room and we're going up a staircase and going into another room. And finally, when we get to like the fourth or fifth room, I stop, you know, I stop them. I says, hey, you know, maybe we should go get a pistol. Like, like what, what the hell is this? Like, you know, how many rooms are we, what, what's going to be behind the next door? Like, what, what's going on over here? And they're laughing at me because they're used to this with the West Side. I'm not. And 
we went through about three more doors and then finally there's this guy barry just standing there smiling and, I, and it made no sense to me like what you know like what are we doing like what what's what's up with all these doors that you're like what are we, what are we got agents in the place watching us and we're going through different rooms and and it was the craziest thing i ever seen and been through oh, man. and and then we get to the last room and somebody introduces us and we all introduce a kiss and hugging and oh. I, I remember telling them when we left, I said, are they out of their minds? And they said, oh, you know, that's the way they are. You know, they're like that. I see, but that, I mean, that's to the extreme, but you know why? Um, yeah. Got to take your hat off to them because yeah. they, you know, they do things and they are as careful as can be. Even if it's ridiculous, they, they don't care. They have no shame. They'll make you go to 99 rooms to get to them, to meet them and, you know, and didn't, that's just crazy. Didn't you? Uh, and and he said something along the lines of like, it's their culture. Like we talk about companies, a company culture. Like they're all like that. They're all like a little weird. They're all like they, yeah. yes, we we all. Um, and I'm not talking about Arbogad. I'm talking about if you talk to other because we don't forget we socialized yeah. and we dealt with other Bogatas and you know we were friendly with with other Bogatas. And we all had the same opinion, which is strange because it's not like it's coming from yeah. the, a look. It's not like it's a Lucchese thing that we say, hey, the West Side guys are a little strange, right? right. They would call them like they're from out of space. They're, they're like, they're <laughs> strange. But we would hear the same thing from other Bogatas about them. So they are very unique out of all the families. They're very, very unique. But, you know, they're doing something right, Tom, you know? I was going to say, because, yeah, the, the truth of the matter is, I think um, if you insulate yourself, you isolate yourself, and, you, you know, you stay strong and, and you have loyalty, it works. I mean, you and I talk almost every day, and, like, we come to the same, and not that we're, listen, we're not, like, saying, listen, people that are watching this are not young kids and aren't people that are going to the life. These are people that are interested to hear what John has to say. Let's call it what it is. I'm not going to pontificate. Let's say, hey, we're doing this for the kids, right? It's no Italian kid is like, hey, I want to be in the mob. You don't really have a choice in the yeah. mob, right? But but one thing we do say is if, if and we're again, but we're also not justifying it either. We're not like saying it's Correct. the right way to be, right? But but one thing is true though, if they fo if you follow the rules and things were supposed to go how they would, would be, you probably may still be in that life and the mob would have a lot stronger presence in New York and the country. Um, yeah. You know, and, I, and, I, and I believe that. And I think you believe that as well. No, it yes, and it's just like you know, we all we all watched a football game, right? Yeah. And there are rules in football, and to get through the game, you have to follow the rules, right? right. And imagine if the rules in a football game were not followed, what would happen to that game? And it's the same. You know, it's the same thing in that life is that rules are put in place for a reason and they're there to follow it. And in that life, they, you know, when they created the rules, it was for a reason, yeah. uh, you know, and, you know, we could go into that and, and talk for five hours. But yeah. it's just that, yes, it's it's there's rules for a reason. And if and if the rules are followed, it usually works. Right. Oh. It should work. And that's why th there are all kinds of problems that happen in that life. Interesting. And um, so we are going to wrap up number seven. So we're going to get back to answering questions. So drop your questions below. Uh, I surprise I'm saying this. Make sure you subscribe. I sound like a YouTuber now. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button because what will happen is whenever John and I release a new one, um, you'll know right away because we're getting a lot of messages. Um, John's doing a great job. He's doing this on his own volition. Um, and John, listen, one, uh, thank you. Uh, You're welcome. And sharing your your um, your experience. And number two, Bono Natale, my friend. You're Bono Natale. And, and to everybody else, and I hope that you all enjoy your uh, Christmas that's coming up. And tomorrow is... Uh, my favorite holiday, Christmas Eve. You know, we have our fish tomorrow as Italians. So I hope uh, everybody enjoys it. And no matter what your faith is, and, you know, happy holidays and keep staying safe out there. All right. Thanks, John.